What's a crack again there, YouTube? Your good friend, Dasmer, coming at you with a little more NCAA 12 Dynasty Tips and Strategies. So took a little look around out there to see if there was any information for, say, the newer player or newer players, or maybe you're just new and never really tried uh, the Dynasty mode. And where do you start out in this? And if maybe you are just uh, been playing with your, you know, six-star, five-star prestige program and tired of crushing the game, Maybe you want to take on the challenge of starting out with a newer or lower ranked program, a lower prestige program, but don't know where to start. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips and strategies that I've come up with because I've been playing the Dynasty modes in NCAA since the beginning. And one thing I always do every year, guaranteed, is try to take a no-no team up to the level of NCAA supremacy. One thing I do suggest is get a team or a couple of teams of mine a uh, place you can go check out what they've got to offer you is uh, in the edit roster screen here and you can see Toledo Rockets is a team I've one of the teams I've traditionally taken in the past from no no to oh my god status in NCAA 12 I'm just taking a flip through here and why I say this is you want to have in mind what it is that your team's good at but also you want a solid base to start somewhere maybe it's a quarterback halfback tandem maybe they got a good wide receiving core Maybe they got a good offensive line or defensive line. Maybe they got a great secondary. Something that you can hang your hat on and say, yeah, man, this is what we're going to build our base around. So let's get into it. Let's start up our dynasty here. New to this year is the dynasty carousel feature. Uh, or Sorry, the dynasty carousel. The coaching carousel. You can create your own coach. You can use an existing coach. You can start off as one of the coordinators for this one. We're just going to use the existing coach and we're going to be the head coach. And we're going to get into this and set up the uh, options for the our dynasty. One thing I strongly suggest is pick challenging, uh, but not frustrating options for your dynasty. And why uh, one mo game mode I've used consistently for quite a while now is the All American game mode. Uh, if you're new to the whole dynasty feature of the game or you've never really tried it before, something you may want to do is recruiting difficulty on varsity. Uh, we want injuries on, fatigue on. Quarter length is something to consider. I find five minutes short. I've always found it really short. I used to play seven or eight minutes. Six minutes seems to be a good number this year. And see that pl player max speed threshold? Uh, you're not going to see me turn it down. I recommend turning it down because what that does is equalizes the fast and slow players in this game. Try turning it down to around 39 or so to start off. That way your fast players are fast and your uh, not so fast players aren't catching them. So here we go. We're going to take a look at the one and two star programs. We've got this filter set up to two star programs. And as you can see with some of these teams, the EA Tiburon team has been quite generous with some of the rankings. Not all of us are going to agree like Colorado here. Why in the name of God are they a two star program? I don't know. But, uh, you know, unfortunately we don't have a say in how these teams are initially ranked. So it is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, something to consider, uh, two things you need to consider when you're picking your team is what state they're located because what that's going to impact is what they call pipeline states and I'll show you the pipeline states uh, in a minute is the pipeline states are usually one or two states where you can get, you're can you going to get a bonus from recruiting from, from and also the conference you come out of it. If you pick like a conference USA or the Mountain West it, because of this whole bogus BCS thing that's something to really consider and to keep in mind is that you're probably going to have to alter your schedule and you're also going to have to go undefeated for probably a number of years to get considered for a national championship. But also you can monkey around a little bit with your schedule uh, and we can get into that. I'll do that in a later episode and more tips and strategies for building your no-no to a superstar dynasty. So as you can see, all kinds of different programs here. There's even a, a good selection. You can be in the SEC. And don't forget about your pipeline states. If you pick like a Baylor, don't forget Baylor's in Texas, and there are some monster Texas schools there. Traditionally, the way EA, EA uh, Tiburon has rated the uh, feeder states, Texas has generally been number one, and they are kind of the number one state to recruit from. Um, yeah. And the uh, southeastern United States. So here we are, we're going to, and here, here's what I mean about the pipeline states. So I, I chose Hawaii as my school. Hawaii and California are my pipeline states. That means recruits that come out of those two states, I'm going to get a bonus for recruiting. Also, there might there's going to be a, a, a chance that they're also going to want to come and play for my school because, hey, I'm close to home. 
So let's take a look at the Hawaii program here, and I'm doing this through the red shirt program or the red shirt screen. And what you want to do is you want to another tip for you is make sure that you're red shirting effectively. Red shirting would and you can only red shirt a player once. You can see the RRS beside players that have already been red shirted. Red shirting means if you've got um, an abundance of freshmen at a position or abundance of players, and say you've got a couple of freshmen there, you can tag the player with a, a red shirt and effectively add one year on to. Uh, the amount of time he's going to end up playing for your program. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're getting a good circular flow of freshmen, sophomore, juniors, seniors, because unlike the Madden uh, uh, franchise mode, the thing you have to remember about NCAA's dynasty mode is there are no free agents, there are no trades, there is no draft. Who you recruit is who you're going to get. There's a period uh, in the offseason where you'll get some, uh, what you call it there, some... Uh, transfers and also you might get some walk-ons but basically the team you recruit is the team you're going to get stuck with now in the recruiting screen there is the three features uh, that you can do to uh, find recruits that are interested in your school there's an actual search tool there's all recruits and then there's the uh, spark or spark you or whatever however the hell is pronounced top 100 this year that is the top 100 re uh, recruits available out of this recruiting freshman class coming into college if you're a one or two star program I highly recommend staying away from this for the first little while as you can see this guy I gave as an example he's a 33 percent interest in me and as you saw those were all five and six star monster programs and you know what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up spending hours on that guy and uh, I'm probably not gonna get anywhere with him or I'll maybe crack into his top ten so what I recommend doing is going into the all prospects and then you know see me here do a sort sort by interest and then what you can do is go through position by position and see who's interested in you the green dot means that they are interested in you in you and then there's a bar indicating and each player is rated by a caliber I've got this first guy on my list here this one caliber uh, defensive tackle he is a Juco junior that means he's coming out of a junior college he will be a junior on my team and I'm only gonna have him as a junior and senior that's something to really consider. I only recommend doing the Juco Juniors if you're really looking for a hole to fill uh, because they're not a long-term solution. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. It's the first video in a series I'm going to do some tips and strategies for building your no-no into a dynasty, uh, you know, supremacy dynasty. And again, just to give you a quick little rundown again, when you're picking your team, make sure you're starting with something to build on. You want to look and see, is there somewhere I can start? You know, if I got somewhere I can build on, is it a great running back, quarterback tandem? Something somewhere. Don't forget, when you're picking your team, don't forget about the implications of your pipeline states. Maybe that concerns you, maybe not. But you know what? A lot of recruiting talent does not come out of the state of Montana or Wyoming, unfortunately. Game options that will challenge you, not discourage you. Make it challenging. Don't make it so hard that you're going to be like, screw this, I'm going to go play, you know, Pokemon. Uh, effective redshirting. Again, that's part of the building a good recruit to graduate flow. Uh, and really taking a, a maximum advantage of your roster. Strategic recruit targeting. Make sure you're going after recruits that you need and are interested in you. In your first year or two, I would not even bother considering somebody who's uh, if you're not listed in, in his top four, put it that way, in his top four, top threes I would try to go after. And try to cast him as wide a net as possible uh, within reason. Three and two stars are really good. Don't forget to actually go in and look at their attributes. Just because he's a three or four star caliber does not mean he's going to be a great thing. And don't forget, start building a good recruit to graduate flow. There's no free agency in NCAA. Your good friend Dasmerg. Thanks, guys.